Hello, it's James from X-Robots. This is part 19 of the real working Iron Man exosuit. Last time I added four of these ball screws to the legs, which when they rotate, of course, produce a linear motion, and this operates the leg joints. There are two of these in each leg, one at the top and one at the bottom, and today we're gonna to put the motors on with a belt drive to drive these pulleys. The motors I'm using are Turning G Aero Drive. It's the 50 mm 280 kV brushless motor. This is the same motor that I used on my giant Lego electric skateboard and also the Iron Man skateboard, uh, which is obviously capable of pushing me along. So it should be more than capable of driving those ball screws with the belt and moving the legs. So that motor is going to drive a belt onto there and that will turn the ball screw, but we need to make something to mount this motor on. Since I've already designed a motor mount for these motors for the Iron Man skateboard, I've basically taken the same CAD, but I've taken one of these side pieces off and we've just left it like this. So we've got a plate to attach to the existing parts of the exosuit. The front plate is going to be ABS, so it doesn't melt if the motor gets hot and the rest is going to be PLA. So we've got four of those mounted and of course on these motors the main body of the motor is actually attached to the pulley so we could put an encoder on the back here in the future. For now I'm going to be using VESC ESCs. So we've got a VESC skateboard ESC which has got really good high current startup so the motor can have a lot of power even though it runs slowly and these are really good for skateboards. We're actually running off an RC system just for testing here but eventually it will be run off the exosuit controller. So I've got my RC handset here and obviously I can run the motor how I want to and that's pretty fast in each direction and you can see there the braking works so it'll stop pretty much dead which is pretty good on skateboards as well this is the BLDC tool which is the config utility for the VESC ESC so it looks like there's quite a lot of stuff in here and there is but it's actually really easy to configure so the main things you need to do to make it work are configure the battery cutoff level to be correct for your battery otherwise it won't work at all I've also set this to PPM, which is for the RC signal. We can control this from UART, so we can send serial commands and various other interfaces. Under motor, we've selected a brushless DC motor, and under the BLDC tab, we've selected that it's sensorless. Now, this VESC ESC will do a motor test, which is down here, so you can do a detection and then apply those settings into the motor settings and that's pretty much all you need to do to get going. Under the PPM settings we've got a control mode and this is set to duty cycle that gives me forward and reverse with braking. There are various others here for skateboards with current control and so on but with no reverse and some with and without braking. So that's the VESC ESC but what I've also got here is an O-Drive robotics motor controller and each of these will control two brushless motors. So these come out slightly better value. They'll also read position encoders for more precise position and speed control. This is something I'll consider an upgrade to in the future but I haven't had time to investigate them right now. I've mounted my brushless motors, they're just stuck to the previous 3D printed plates with sticky tape for now, well they should be secure enough. The plan eventually is to re-engineer this whole mounting out of some CNC aluminium or something but for now this will do perfectly well to test the motion and see if it actually works before I invest too much money. So all my VESC ESCs are now fitted on the back there and now we need some power distribution and some data. So I'm using these two LiPos to power the whole thing. These are the same ones from the back board. Don't forget to check that out if you haven't seen it already. And I've got these two bolts here in a 3D print and these are gonna be to distribute the power. So I've got these eyelet crimps that we're gonna put on the wires and bolt them all onto these and then we can make good connections. So we need to run the power down from the batteries to these, one for positive and one for negative, and then distribute that down to the legs. I have got little screw holes here, don't know if you can just see them, so I can eventually make a cover for this, because obviously it's quite dangerous if these get shorted out. I've wired in my network of power here, so we've got all our positives and negatives bound together, and the wires go down. So I just want to give this a test to make sure this whole arrangement works. I've got my little RC receiver on here again, and the RC handset, so now I can control that motor. Yep, seems to work pretty well. However, before we can actually control the motors here and walk along, we're gonna need to get some position feedback on all of the joints so we can work out 
where they are. So to give us feedback on the joints, we've got a potentiometer mounted on a bracket there and we've got a pulley. So the pulley's mounted here and I don't know if you can just see the string there either side around the pulley and around the big pulley that I left on the actual exosuit. And that means that now if I move the joint, you should be able to see that pulley rotating and rotating the pot to give me position feedback. As I say, the big pulleys are part of the exosuit and these were originally going to be the pulleys that I was going to pull the joints around on with the blocks and tackles like I did in the version 1 suit before I bought the ball screws on this one. So they've actually served a purpose in the end. I could probably put a string tensioner on with a little spring, but for now it's just tied off and taped. And we can alter that in the future and we may also need to alter the pulley size of course, if we make it smaller, that will make the pot rotate more and we'll get better resolution on our feedback. I've decided I need an emergency stop button, one of these big red buttons on the suit to stop everything if it all goes wrong. However, it's not high enough power to switch the actual power off. So instead, I'm gonna switch these relays and those are gonna cut off the RC signal to each of the four motor drivers and that should stop the suit when I press it. So here's my electronics. I've got an Arduino Mega here, which is gonna read all those pot positions. We'll have an input from the pressure pads we looked at a couple of weeks ago to actually drive the joints. And then it will output the signal to the motor drivers via these pins and via the relays, which are part of my emergency stop. So there's my emergency stop switch. And essentially this will cut the wires if I press it, so that will cut all the motors off. We've got a regulator here that regulates everything down to 12 volts from the 24 volt battery feed, because these are 12 volt relays, and also some status LEDs that we'll talk about in a minute. So the electronics is placed here between the batteries. We've got a USB boost pack to power the actual five volts of the electronics. And of course, I've got my e-stop placed over here where I can reach it. I've now wired all my pots in and these wires come up here. They come to a board here for five volt breakout. So each pot, of course, has zero and five volts on it. And the analog ins go to the analog in of the Arduino. You'll also notice these blue lights are on. And these are home position indicators for the legs. So there's one of my pots wired in. Obviously, there's one on the ankle and one on each hip. And basically the home position indicators are to make sure the legs are set in the middle so when I power up the motors they don't run straight away. Also I think the motor driver probably won't run with the demand signal coming into it. When it's RC you have to have the stick straight in the middle before it initialize. So really what I'll do is set all the legs straight and then I can power up the motor stage. So that means if I go and turn one of these manually, which is pretty easy, you can see that second light goes off there. It only comes on when I put this back to a position where it's roughly in the middle and that means my leg is homed. Obviously there's one for each joint, so if I grab the other one, we'll see a different light go off if I move it. The code for that's pretty simple. I've declared my four variables there, one for each hip and one for each ankle, and I've opened a serial port and declared the pins for the LEDs as output. I'm reading the analog ins there for each pot, and I've applied offsets because they're not mechanically all perfectly in the middle. Uh, some are worse than others, that one's pretty good. And that means all of those values sit at 512, which is pretty much the middle of a 10-bit ADC. Then I've obviously got some simple if statements here that turn the LEDs on and off if the positions there are in the middle of 500 and 520, which is actually a pretty small amount. I'm also writing them out to the serial port, but I don't have to do that really, that's just for diag so I can get them aligned correctly. The next thing we need to do is actually apply some control to the motor drivers based on a demand position. I've now wired in my motor drivers via the relays so my emergency stop works, and I've also added these pots, and these are left over from another project, it's a little test rig, and I'm using two of these pots to send a demand position to two of the joints so I can turn them and that actually moves the joints. So I've turned the joints into a big servo and this is my demand position. Of course, eventually I'll have pressure pads all throughout the suit so that I can move the suit when I move. And the code for that looks like this. So I'm using the servo library and the PID library there, which is what I've done in a lot of projects. Of course, those motor drivers are using an RC servo signal, so they're set up as servos, and those are attached to two pins. I've only set up two joints for now, because I've only got, well, three pots, but I'm only using two. But of course, the other two joints would just be a case of replicating this. This is my PID setup, and there's also some up here. So basically, I'm just using a P of one. We've got quite good braking on those motor drivers, so there's not much chance of them overshooting. I'll probably need to tune these values as I go and add the pressure sensing, but this will do for testing. Further down the code, I'm computing both my PIDs, so we've got our set point is the pot, which is the demand position, our input is the actual pot on the hip, uh, left and right in this case, and we're doing a PID compute, and then basically we're putting an offset on that and writing that out with write microseconds to the servo, so the mid position is 1500, and this PID controller gives us a swing of plus minus 500, which is the correct range for varying servo positions between 1000 and 2000 microseconds. So it writes those out, and I'm also chucking those out to the serial terminal so I can see what the numbers are. 
So now if I twiddle these knobs, we should be able to see the motors moving. And it makes quite a cool brushless motor sound. And this is just like controlling a servo. So if I move the knob and leave it there, the joint tries to catch up. I probably need a bit more gain on these because I've only got a P of one. But for now, this will do for testing. There's also a dead band configured on those motor drivers. But I probably need to take that out so that it's a bit more responsive. But for now, I can, of course, position the joints. They make quite a cool sound because of the brushless motors. And that works pretty well. So we need to replicate that to the feet and obviously get the pressure pads on to control them instead of these knobs. So next time I'm going to be revisiting my pressure pad sliders that I built in part 17. These are Hall Effect sensor and magnet assemblies on a sliding rail that I can push against. I'm going to be building a much more robust, reliable version of that for each of the pressure pads. And there's going to be quite a few of those around the inside of the legs and the hips and the ankles with the processing in between so I can work out where I'm pushing and how the suit should react and hopefully it should walk along as I walk. After that, we're gonna build the arms. So the intention was to actually start with an arm, but I've concentrated quite a bit on the legs and I've really kind of got obsessed with it, making this thing walk as I walk, which has sort of become the focus of the project. In any case, most of these projects, my main builds are funded through Patreon. So have a look at patreon.com xrobots and you can get access to some exclusive rewards, including a live stream with me and all my videos early. All right, that's all for now.